known as Derek Osborne. However, my friends call me Oz. If you don't know, you don't know. Welcome to another episode of Throne of Angels video blog where I am here to show you a world in miniature. So, welcome to episode 26, The Redux. What does that mean? Well, that means um, I filmed episode 26 once before and last week when I went to go through the processing and editing, I realized that I have pressed record at the wrong time on two of the three segments. And so I recorded the in-between. Ah! Dang! Technical difficulty user error. Man, sometimes. But I'll tell you what. If I can go 26, or, well, yeah, 26 episodes and only make that one mistake, uh, as far as, like, camera work goes, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. So I actually had a guest. Um, my buddy Jay was over, and we recorded a bunch of stuff. And, yeah, didn't didn't take. <laughs> so we looked at his uh, his part of Project Core. Um, we also took a look at, uh, you know, basically part two of my terrain extravaganza. If you understood that, you speak gibberish. My terrain extravaganza, which is like right here, this stuff, this area here. Um, so we'll take a look at that here shortly. Well, when we, uh, when we filmed, there were a couple of Kickstarters just getting rolling. Now they're done, right? Um, we talked about it initially, held Dorado, uh, finished out at just under 130K. Congratulations, Dave and Kai there at Cypher. Happy for you guys. Way to fund, way to go. Um, we'll be uh, probably looking at some of their stuff again here real soon in the future. See if I can't get my hands on some stuff a little early, right? Uh, maybe do a giveaway or two or whatever. Speaking of giveaways, I got El Dorado, the, uh, the signed rule book, sitting right there in front of me, uh, ready to roll. I've already drawn a winner. Technically, Jay drew a winner. Um, so I will cut to that at the end uh, or in the middle or somewhere. We'll see it somewhere, right? Um, Zombicide Season 2, breaking records uh, on top. Cool mini or not, uh, cracking the number one spot for most funded board game uh, ever. Period. 2.25 million. Uh, dude, that's some that's some coin. Um, man, dude, I'll tell you what, they ran out of stretch goals because uh, they weren't expecting it to go that far. So that's awesome. Uh, fantastic. Congratulations to you guys. Uh, Wild West Exodus, for those of you uh, that pledged on it, uh, obviously it was successful and went through. Uh, congratulations, Romeo and the crew over there uh, for that. Um, I do believe we'll have some of that stuff showing up here. We'll take a look at it uh, in the near future. Um, one of my boys, Sci-Fi Tough Guy, Ethan, what's up? Shout out to the E-Monster. Uh, he asked a question. What am my opinion on Drake? Um, quite honestly, uh, I don't have any faith in that Kickstarter. And the reason being is it's the third time that they put it up. Uh, the first time they put it up, it didn't fund. The second time they put it up, it didn't fund. I don't Maybe the first time they pulled it. Uh, but I don't remember. But I remember seeing this Kickstarter that is funding being the third time that they processed through it. Um, some of the models, they look okay. Um, I haven't watched a gameplay demo, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but as soon as like it failed to fund that first time, or they pulled it and then they put it up again and it failed to fund, I lost all faith in um, backing that project. Uh, but, again, it um, isn't exactly what I'm looking for in a game. But I'll keep my eye on it. Eye on it and let you know a little further on down the line. Um, Zenit just posted up the uh, Indiegogo campaign for Kensai, uh, their uh, Japanese uh, inspired tabletop game. For those of you who don't know Zenit, they do the Nemesis product uh, or the Nemesis game, which is some of the stuff I've actually featured here. Uh, I really dig the Orphans line in that game. I also like the Cult of a Thousand Faces. Uh, so They've got some, some good artwork and some great stuff going on, so uh, hopefully they get that one squared and funded because it actually looks pretty cool. We're looking at a pretty decent sized game uh, if it goes through the way that they expect or want it to. Um, that's about all I got for news right now. I'm actually headed to ACD Games Day tomorrow at 6 a.m., so hopefully I can get this filmed, cut, and up before I leave. Uh, with that, let's take a look at some training and get this bad boy rolling. First up this episode, we've got the uh, Archaeotech Obelisk from uh, Secret Weapon Miniatures out of the camp of uh, Mr. J. So, 
it's a simple single one piece model, right? Um, I don't think it's solid because there's a little flex to it, uh, but it's still a pretty cool piece of, of equipment. Now, uh, it is really basic, really simple. As you can see, um, you know, we've got a top, <laughs> we've got a bottom, and we've got four sides. Each of the four sides is a, is a single, um, single piece, all replicated across each side. There's really not a whole lot to be said about it. It is a quick and easy piece. One of the things that, uh, that I am looking at uh, in regards to these things, right, is uh, pieces that I can actually get painted and onto the table really quick, right? So with Project uh, Terrain Board or Display Border, well, it's not a display board. It'll be a train board. Project Terrain Board coming up, right, I'm looking at pieces that I can use uh, to basically put uh, a number of um, options on the board in as quick a manner as possible. This being one of them. I've got a couple of these things uh, so I may put them both up as a single pair um, on a board and do like you know a, a gate style thing or I may take one and I don't know cut it in half or something and, and uh, have you know one on uh, a train um, base and then another one uh, that's you know two different pieces or two slabs of it broken you know on its side or something. Haven't decided yet but obviously that'll be part of my um, project uh, terrain board. So, quick, simple, easy, uh, a great little piece out of the uh, secret weapon camp from Mr. J. That is the Archeo Tech Obelisk. This next set of pieces, uh, we're gonna go like basically from small to large. Uh, all of them by Micro Art Studio. This stuff uh, I picked up at uh, Cool Mini or Not and I believe you can still get these on their online store. So this is a small missile silo. It's a solid piece of resin, a quick easy piece. Again, like I said, the whole point of this is to have uh, stuff that I can either just put flat down and, and be ready to roll or uh, stuff that I can put on a mounting board and have a, a quick complete terrain piece. As you can see, we've got a missile silo here. Um, just entertaining because obviously it looks like it was carved out of an egg crate. Uh, they also have a large one that, that looks like a complete egg carton that has uh, been molded into a, a piece. Um, obviously we've got a doorway entry there um, or uh, quite possibly something that uh, is a broken, I don't know, could be rubble, could be an entryway, could be something. Looks like a gas can like right there on the side. So, uh, you know, abandoned, I don't know. Active, I don't know. Let's make some rules and make it active. The thing's going to set off a missile and blow up your base. Who knows? Quick, simple, easy piece, right? A uh, little, little quick uh, dusting of paint. <laughs> Literally is all this thing's going to need. I'm going to prime it. I'm going to uh, do some base colors. I did order an airbrush, so I've got an airbrush on the way, which will obviously speed this stuff up for me really, really quick. Uh, and then I'll probably just do some quick web brushing on the... Uh, on the rubble and give it some highlights and and bam we're good I've got a, a complete piece of train probably done in, in two hours so again this is a small missile silo from uh, Micro Art Studios again picked it up from CMOM so this is another great little set from Micro, Micro Art Microsoft from Micro Art Studios this is the crate heap set number three as you can see, there are four pieces in this set. Uh, each one of them is, I don't know, maybe, well, as you can see, they're about, they're about hand size. So we'll go ahead and throw uh, the Neff Soldier and then the Space Marine in there so you guys can kind of see how big they are. Right, definitely line of sight blockers. Uh, definitely stuff that you could use as hills. One of the things that Jay and I did discuss when we were talking about this is that, you know, you do see a lot of hills on tabletop that are just boring slanted sloped hills, right? Why not use something like this? This is a spectacular little set. Uh, again, I got it from Cool Mini or Not. It was 35 bucks. Uh, these are, are hard foam, right? So there's there's no breakage going to happen here, right? I'm going to drop and, and beat and abuse these things and, and they'll be 100% uh, fine. Basically, it's it's literally a crate heap set, right? So we're looking at a, a shanty town style set of, of crates. Um, let me move a couple of these out of the way, and we'll take a look at a couple of them up close. Right. So we've got um, you know metal plating, metal sheeting. We've got oil drums. We've got um, 
uh, whatever you want to call those things. Basically, uh, air canisters or um, propane tanks, you know, whatever. Um, you can give these things rules if you want to, otherwise they can just be hills, right? I mean, you can climb up on these bad boys any way you want to. Uh, again, as far as, you know, how they sit and how tall they are, well, we'll take the two baseline models that I always use, and we will slide them into frame, and we will zoom out, and we will take a look, right? So, I mean, we're line of sight blockers, right? I mean, this this is... A hill that you can use is a rolling hill um, because you know you'd be able to climb up and get over it without any issues. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, claim that it's going to take any uh, any um, movement penalties to uh, to get up and over these things. But again, um, you know, they are fairly large and they can easily support models. So I don't see any issues with making them hills. Uh, but again, line of sight blockers, without a doubt. So, you know, this one, obviously we've got more, um, you know, styrated aluminum. We've got the old uh, diamond plating. Um, again, barrels and canisters uh, all around, right? So there's your barrels, and you've got different types of crates, and then canister down there on the bottom. Uh, you know, again, more of the uh, corrugated metal plating. Um, they just have good little personality, right? I mean, they're, they're simple. But definitely effective. Uh, you know, you've got, I don't know, maybe a generator hab or a small block there. So they've they done a good job at actually giving them all a different look and a feel. And again, this is the, the set number three. There's uh, obviously set number one and a set number two that have different sizes and different. Um, numbers of parts. I like these ones because uh, basically it's it's a set of four small obstacles or hills uh, or even objectives uh, that I can use in a scenario based play. Right so um, I think my battery's down on my remote. Zoom out, zoom out. Here how about if we just use one of the camera. Bam! There we go. Uh, yeah definitely battery dying on the remote. Time to replace it. So there's four of these bad boys as you can see they're good size, right? So I mean, I'm pushing my little miniatures around here, but um, we're talking, I don't know, probably an hour's worth of paint work on each one, right? You Basically, they're already primered for you, right? These things are basically black. Um, you can see that, you know, they've got a kind of a prime on them already, so they're probably just straight ready for paint. Like I said, I've got an airbrush on the way. We're talking an hour, hour and a half, uh, I think, max, at getting these things on the table. If I really want to put some time into them, three or four hours with a couple of washes and some pigments to give them some weathering and, and you know, throw, throw a, a quick uh, clear coat over it and bam, we're done. So, great little set. I really like it. I think, you know, 35 bucks for a set of these four things, that's an absolute steal. So, again, this is the, uh, the Crate Heap set number three, number three from uh, Micro Art Studio. And again, I got mine from, uh, from CoolMeteorNot.com. All right, and last, but certainly not least in this uh, terrain spectacular part two, we're looking at another piece from uh, Micro Art Studio. Remember I said I'm gonna go from the smallest to the largest, this one obviously being the biggest. This is the pump station, right? For me, now this is the biggest thing that I think I would like purchase myself in regards to a piece of pre-built terrain. Um, I don't remember the cost on this one, but I think it was probably right around that $30, $35 mark. Uh, again, I picked mine up from, from Cool Mini or not. Those guys take care of me, so I do my best to throw uh, anything back at them that I can. So support them. They sponsor this blog. Go buy stuff from Cool Mini or not. All right. Um, pump station. It's same material, that hardened foam. Right, I mean this stuff is, is literally rock hard. Um, you know, there's no dents there. I'm pushing pretty good and hard on that, and I'm not, you know, doing really anything. Again, it's one of those pieces where you're going to drop and kick and push, and you know, I mean, you're worried about paint chipping more than anything else. But as you can see, a uh, pump station is a pump station is a pump station. It's a pretty basic, simple, easy thing. Exhaust ports in the back. Um, obviously, six different pumps um, that that coincide with what's going on. 
Uh, it has a resin door. This is a resin entryway door. Obviously, it goes right there on front. Now, why did they do it separately? Because they actually have different door designs that you can get, right? So if you want a different door for your pump station versus the one that I have, uh, go right ahead. But um, you'll have to go looking for it, or you'll have to order a separate door, which I do believe they sell separately. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, we're looking at a piece that pre-primed. Um, all i got to do is throw some paint on it, do some you know quick highlighting, a uh, little weathering, uh, maybe with some pigments, and, you know, I mean, we're off and, off and rocking. Now here, taking a quick look, obviously size comparison, this thing is a little bit, well it's almost about twice the size as the uh, largest um, crater, or excuse me, crate um, pile that I had uh, overall, right? Again, we'll look at the, uh, the height ratio on this thing, and you guys can see that, I mean the door, the door itself is about as big as, I mean the Terminator can almost fit through that door, right? So that should give you an indication of how tall this thing is. Definitely blocks line of sight. You know, are you going to be able to climb up and on it? Mm, I doubt it, right? It's going to be one of those pieces that is definitely something that um, you want to blow it up for an objective or, you know, it's just, it's a non-usable building, one of the two. Or even an entry point into like an underground hab or whatnot. Um, I've got ideas for that. Maybe with the, uh, with the terrain project coming up, we'll see. So... I think, for the most part, um, that really kind of gives you a good, quick, basic rundown of some really inexpensive, easy to acquire uh, pieces that will be quick and easy to actually put on the tabletop. Uh, and you know, as we roll into project uh, table top, I guess <laughs> project terrain, you'll be able to see it. Um, and before y'all inquire, uh, yes, my voice is a little raspy. Uh, it's that time of year when my allergies just kind of kick me in the face. So, raspy voice, plus I was in Vegas a couple of weeks back, and I actually lost my voice in Vegas because I'm allergic to cigarettes. But, uh, for those of you that care, there's that. For those of you that don't, well, there it is anyways. As I said, this is the pump station from Micro R Studios. Uh, again, picked it up from Simon. Um, I believe they're out of stock on this one currently, so you might have to search some other places for it. But, great little piece, uh, lots of good little detail, and uh, something that I'll definitely be using in Project Tabletop coming up here. Uh, as soon as I'm done with Project Johan. So, uh, there it is. The pump station from Micro Art Studio. Yeah! woo -hoo! As you can see, voice raspy like I was just saying. Um, quick and Dirty, Throne of Angels, episode 26. Uh, obviously, this one, um, I rampage through it like a madman. Uh, when I'm off and traveling or needing to get off and travel, uh, obviously, my time frame is short. But I'm behind and I need to get caught up. So, uh, episode 26, hopefully I get it cut and up tonight. Um, for those of you that want to know, yes, it's Scooby-Doo on my t-shirt. Um, my six-year-old got this for me and she loves when I wear it. So, uh, since I'm going away for uh, a few days, I always tend to wear uh, her shirts and um, I get lots of good daddy points. So, signed copy of the Hell Dorado Core Rulebook. I'm going to cut two the uh, actual drawing for this, but here's the name for the winner. So we're gonna cut right now. Cut. Now the moment that you held the Rattle fans have been waiting for. Who's gonna get that book, Jay? Somebody excited. Somebody in this hat right here. That's right. Magic hat number two. Reach in there, Jay, and tell me who's gonna get that. What do you mean? Oh, oh he's got two. Uh, Joe Figueroa. Joe Figueroa! It's all yours, brother. Congratulations. Sign held the Rattle rule book on the way to you. I will shoot you a message and get your shipping information. And we'll get you squared away and taken care of. So I'll get that in the mail to you. And we're back. So, congratulations, Joe. I will get in touch with you and get your shipping information on this. And uh, get your shipping information and get this out to you. Um, I don't have any contests coming up that I'm aware of. But I'll see if I can't get something cracked together either with Wild West, uh, Exodus, uh, or um, who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll meet somebody in the next couple of weeks that are really just, you know, wanting to get some product out there and get it into your guys' hands. So, uh, once again, thank you all for joining me. I do appreciate it. Next time we'll take a look at uh, Project Core in depth. I know Jay's got more work done. Um, I am close to complete with Project Zombicide the Nightmare. 
uh, and uh, that means I'll be getting back to Project Johan. So uh, hopefully I'll have something to show you guys in a couple of weeks and uh, we'll move on it if so. If not, we'll just look at Project Core and see what Jay's got done. Uh, outside of that, as always, thanks for joining me. I'll see you in two. <laughs>